Let's check in with our Bill Folsom, who's been monitoring this from the start. And Bill, uh, just kind of give us uh, a perspective from uh, your standpoint right now and what you're seeing as it relates to what you saw early on, at least from a distance. Well, it's looking similar to how it started when we first saw it. The fire was over to the right, which you're looking at, and then it started pushing south. It's interesting how this is changes, and that's why we're always cautious when we uh, bring up certain things that we're seeing, because this one is changing, it seems, every five minutes. A few moments ago when you and I were talking, the smoke was going up a little bit, mostly laying down on the ground. Now it's uh, pushing to the south. We were talking about that idea of containment, and people say, well, is it contained? And at this point, you're not going to hear them talking about that, because what containment does is say that they've pushed the fire back in onto itself. There are times when you can say 100% contained, but the fire will not be out. What they do is they look and they try and get a band or a line that is wide enough where they can confidently say, you know, the odds of it jumping that line, uh, you know, are 10% or something. You know, they want to get at really low odds. Right now, they keep having this wind and it's pushing in different directions. So, as you said, they're not looking at. Uh, saying how much containment they have. They're just right now trying to get things in control. That's going to come hours later from that because when you have wind doing what it's doing, it just makes it a challenge. So it's a little bit deceiving and uh, to see what's going on because it is pushing it again towards the south. But whether that is just smoke going and they've got, uh, you know, firefighters in front of it, keeping it from going. The good news is everything we're seeing right now is that lighter white smoke. The lighter the smoke gets, that is what you want to see. So not a lot of dark things going on. We are seeing helicopters coming in. In fact, if you can stick with us, I don't know how quickly or if we've got a tree in the way. We're looking at something coming out of Fort Carson. It looks like a Chinook that is coming our way. I don't know if that'll be doing drops or if they're coming to take a look, but uh, one of those advantages of having a post as large as Fort Carson to the south is that they have ability to potentially come in and bring some big buckets in and do some drops. So it is a Chinook coming our way. Um, smoke's blowing in the direction and uh, yeah, we'll yeah, keep a, hey, Bill, let me, that view going for you. Yeah, Bill, let me jump in real quick. You are familiar with that area in the southwest part of the Springs. And again, in order for um, those help, I'm, I'm, hang on, Bill. Just Josh, Josh, go ahead. What, what are you saying? Josh, go. All right, what I wanted to say was, Bill, uh, what about areas where those helicopters can do the bucket dips? Uh, are you familiar with any nearby lakes or ponds or reservoirs that they could utilize? For sure, just to the south here, it couldn't be much closer. You have those two reservoirs that are just over by a Stratton open space. Uh, I think they actually hold water for the Broadmoor, so I don't know if they need to get permission from that, but you have those two reservoirs that are just to the south of here. When you're up on uh, Lower Gold Camp Road, you can see those two reservoirs there where they could definitely go get water from. I don't know, uh, there's also over at Memorial Park, they could dip in there. Uh, so yeah, there are uh, definite uh, options for going in. If you're looking at the bottom of there, it has a hose on the bottom of it. That looks like one of those that actually uh, can drop. And I was trying to see the color on that. I can't tell if that is gray and coming from Fort Carson or if that isn't actually a firefighting Chinook that they come. If it's red and white, then it's a firefighter one. Right. Anyway, it has that hose on the bottom. And I don't know if that's got water because it's got the hose, but we may be seeing a drop here any second. Typically what they do is look for the hot spots or the places with potential um, for it to spread and just really put a big douse on it. So yeah, uh, we'll and see. And that's and either doing some. Oh, I'm sorry. And it, uh, our uh, director says it's red and white, Bill. So uh, there, there you go. We have eyes on this thing. But I was going to say, Bill, um, it's interesting to see this quickly the meshing of uh, civilian versus military response to a fire. And you know, when we went through Waldo Canyon, Black Forest, uh, back in the day, uh, communication and interface between multiple uh, government entities to get resources to where they needed to be was an absolute nightmare. And sadly, lives were lost, homes were lost, because there was a huge information or just lit um, uh, a gap between 
the ability of the federal government or the state government and local civilian groups, you know, your firefighters, police, to be able to mesh, communicate, and get the job done. Uh, that is true in the wake of Black Forest as well as the Waldo Canyon fire and then the other large fires, there goes. There go. Big drop going on there. That's always a relief to people when they see those helicopters come in. And just to be clear, when we say red and white, that means that is not military, but another, uh, probably with another one of the agencies that's here. But um, that is not with Colorado Springs a fire. That is an agency coming in to help out here. And uh, that is to the point you're talking about. In the wake of all these other fires, our state has really come together and we have a state fire agency that coordinates it. And we saw with some of these other fires over the summer that Colorado Springs and Teller County and Pueblo were all sending firefighters to help. Well, then it turns around and we've got a fire here and they all coordinate. They handle it if they can on the local level, but before it gets out of control, they have these resources to call on from around. And Southern Colorado is a big part of that. We have uh, places at Colorado Springs Airport, Pueblo Airport, also in Canyon City, where they fly those airplanes out of. We are a big support area for those intergovernment agencies to, to fight fires, and we're starting to see that action right now with our local agencies came together first, and now we've got either at a state or a federal level that's bringing in some helicopters to help out right now.